true love never ends. And just a little bit of background why. Like when David comes here too, it's like a true love never ends. Because we're going, we going, went past all the worlds. I was talking with Jackie and Kirsten, past the mother daughter, but we seem to be married. At one point, it seemed. <laughs> <laughs> then we seemed to be divorced. And each step was a guided approach towards expansion and love. And people would often say, How can divorce? An expansion of love. Come on. And then I told him this story. <laughs> Actually, there was a moment when both of us, we really didn't want to get divorced. You might could even say, in some ways, put it off. What was coming? Then we both woke up one night at like two or three in the morning. I'm just like standing there in the middle of the room. Like, were you doing on something? Yeah. So we went into, we were sleeping inside our bedrooms. So we met in the third room and sat down and could feel that it was time. So we went and had to fill out the divorce application for Utah. And ask all these questions, and it was really funny because it's like a hundred questions, but some of them were like, question number four, do you have kids? And then we would check no. As soon as you check no, ten questions go, whoop, they, they disappear. Like, there's a lot more to go into when you have kids, like who's going to get them and all this. And then another one, do you have financial assets? Joint financial assets, yes or no? No. Right. Well, we have to be financial. Do we have assets that need to be tied? No. <laughs> Ten more questions, collapse. Do you have, you know, <laughs> the whole form came down to like this really simple question. <laughs> this is going to be the simplest divorce in the world. But then it came to the question. You are applying for a no-fault divorce, which means that you have irreconcilable differences. Please write in this box at least one irreconcilable difference. <laughs> <laughs> and so we looked at each other and we're like, oh, we had, no <laughs> we, had, we had no irreconcilable difference. We had no reason to get divorced other than it was the plan of the spirit, because we were called to go deeper. <laughs> we did. That was my first attempt to read. Chris is like, you no. can't write that. <laughs> this is the government. You gotta like, the Holy Spirit is gonna channel and answer you. So then I thought, we have decided that our mind training no longer can use this symbol. We need to go further into God. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not going to work. So I tried one more, you know, like, we really love each other, but we feel the divorce will bring us more love. <laughs> no. So then I wrote, we cannot agree what to put in this box. <laughs> It's the love 
that's shared, you know. That's why it doesn't really matter what you say to people in the end, but it's the attitude that's conveyed. I remember last year when I went to England, um, I had this um, participant in the, in the audience saying, how do you do this in, in the community? It feels so intense, relationship partners are living together after breaking up and, you know, and switching, you know, then you move on to the next one, but still in the community, how do you do this? It seems like so intense. And, yeah, it was intense. <laughs> At times, because there is nowhere to hide, you, you, you can't just hide from a corner and avoid, you know, whatever that's coming up by facing, you know, whatever, whoever that's in front of you. But on the other hand, I have to say that the thing that pulled us through all of that was the single purpose. Like when all of us, like Jason said at the beginning of the gathering, when we're all going, you know, for the light, for the common, like together, shooting for the same point then all of the other things that seems very intense and very interpersonal will bring up, but they have no power when all of her, all the four, all of them are purpose are on something else. We're not, we are to heal all the interpersonal grievance, abandonment thoughts, rejection, fear of loss, and all of that. But when the mind is pulled to the single purpose of awakening and healing and keep nothing hidden from our awareness, then actually it's a fast and easy path. So that's what we can, you know, share with all of you guys. Is it, it's not a path of sacrifice. It's not a path of exclusion. It is truly a path of letting everything be revealed, then find out who we truly are. You know, the true nature is we're so in love, and so connected, but there was a hatred when we play roles with each other. We want to fit the relationship in a box. Are you perfect? Yeah, we, we, we are in a partnership relationship. That's what we are. We have to honor that. You have to do this for me so that I know who I am. And it's just a lot of, a lot of grievance underneath that. So in a way that people always ask about holy relationship and special relationship, and it's really not, the difference is not in form. It's not like how your relationship looks a certain way, a special relationship looks a certain way. But it's all about the purpose. It's all about whether this relationship is used for awakening, whether we are using the relationship to achieve total transparency, hiding nothing, and allow all the blocks to come up so that we can see what is underneath everything. And if that is the purpose, that is a holy relationship. And that can be very shocking to the ego, because it's shocking to its purpose. You know, it's a totally different purpose. But, yeah, it's a very beautiful and loving path.